Okay, so today we are, like I was saying before, today is basically like a catch up day. Um, we're gonna, in the lecture, we're gonna cover the four pillars of object oriented programming inheritance. Um, these first two are kind of like informational, they're nice to know. Um, I've had been asked a couple times on interviews, like, what are the four pillars of object oriented programming, right? So it's just one of those things that's common knowledge, something you should know. Um, inheritance, so the emphasis will be on modules and packages because we will be using this as we move forward, okay? Uh, modular practice, this one is optional. So um, overriding polymorphism, all of these are practice. So I want to, oh, I close my browser, go to the platform. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands that the assignments that are due or the assignments that will count against you if you don't turn them in are the ones that don't have any sort of indication. Like the ones that say P mean practice, the one that say O mean optional. So the core assignments are the ones that don't have any badge next to the pencil. Okay, so practice is basically just that, it's practice. So the assignments you should have by the end of the day are for loop basics, this one right here, um, functions intermediate, which is the last one on the fundamentals. And then for object-oriented programming, the only core or required assignments are bank account and users with bank accounts, okay? So I'm gonna make breakout rooms for each of these core assignments. If you have not completed these, please, please, please go to those breakout rooms. I'm gonna cycle through them throughout the day and help if anybody has questions. Um, utilize your peers as resources, right? So don't just go into a room and work by yourself. I want you guys, the collaboration is key, right? So. Make sure these assignments are done. For those of you who are completely done with all of these and you're up to, or are finished users with bank accounts, the activity for the end of the day will be, or for this today will be the hackathon. So this is sort of a fun activity. It's not required. It's not like, you know, you gotta turn it in. It's just, we're gonna basically get on teams. We'll have a deck of cards team and we'll have a pirates versus ninjas team. So basically there's starter code in here and you're gonna use, the object-oriented programming concepts we've learned up to this point to, am I recording? Am I? Oh my gosh. I think I am. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, yes, you are. Sure. I am. Just on top, you are. Cool, thank you. All right, uh, I don't see that. So, um, so yeah, we'll have one group that's the deck of cards, another group that's the Pirates, and Nin Pirates versus Ninjas, and you'll collaborate and make this game and then you'll present at the end of the day. Okay, so, but this is only after you're completely caught up. Okay, so any questions about anything? And if you have assignments that are done and you just haven't submitted them, please submit them to the platform. Okay, because if they're not done by, like by Friday, they'll start determining who hasn't completed assignments and you'll get a nasty, not nasty, but you'll get an email saying, hey, you haven't done your assignments. So I want everybody to be caught up. I want everybody to be you know, ready to go for, because tomorrow we're jumping back into the fast paced stuff. We're gonna start Flask. We're gonna start talking about full stack development. So it's, it's crucial that you understand, especially the object oriented programming stuff by the end of today. Okay, so please, you're not bothering me. You're not, I'm not doing anything. I mean, I'm doing stuff, but I'm like, you know, you, please ask me if you have any questions or ask it. Okay, any questions about anything? All right, so for the lecture today, so the four pillars, um, go to four pillars. So who can tell me what the four pillars of object-oriented programming who has them memorized? Encapsulation. Whoa, okay, cool, hold on, let me write them down. 
I don't have that memorized. Just that's so you know. no, no, that's fine. If you're looking at, if you're, if you're looking at, <laughs> I don't have, well, like I do, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you a secret to memorizing it. Okay. So um, I'm sorry. You said encapsulation. Yeah. Okay. Inheritance. 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 Polymorphism. And abstract. Inheritance. Polymorphism. P-H-I-S-M, I get that right? Yeah, and abstraction. Ab. Oh my gosh, abstract, shun. There we go. So the way I remember these, at least remember the words, is it's a pi. Okay, so A, abstraction, P, polymorphism, I inheritance, E encapsulation. So that's, I use that acronym, a pi, to remember all the four pillars. So what, let's take them in order that they cover them. So let me go back to the platform. Okay, so encapsulation. Anybody want to take a stab at or give us your understanding of what encapsulation is just from having done the reading. It's um, it's like uh, encapsulating a box of code or a, like a block of code within basically like a container. Yeah, yeah. It's based so and encapsulation is basically what object-oriented programming is. We're packaging data and the actions associated with that data in a capsule, if you will, right? So just like a pill, we package all the medicine in the capsule. It's sort of a compartment or a box or a way of keeping the data and the actions associated with that data together. Okay, so when you think encapsulation, you just want to think that's what object-oriented programming is, okay? So it's just like packaging up data with the methods associated with that data, okay? And inheritance, we haven't done any examples of inheritance, but what, just based on the word, what do you think inheritance is? We I mean, like child and parent. Yeah, pro yeah, child and parent. So we have the ability to have a, what they call a parent class. So if we have something like um, user, right? We have user would be like the base class or the parent class. And then we would have users that have the same functionality, but we may be adding something to it, right? So if we have a user and we have an admin user, we have a paid user or a user who's using the free tier, we could make separate subclasses off the user class without having to rewrite the code for each of those separate classes. They would just inherit the code that's necessary from the parent class. Okay, polymorphism. What is that? What is that? The ability to change. Yeah, yeah. So polymorphism, morph means change or shape. Um, so polymorphism means that it's the action of a object will depend on the circumstances. So if we have a user superclass and we have a admin user subclass, we may have like a method like sign on, right? Where the user is able to sign on. That sign on functionality, or if we have a, like a sign on method, that method will do different things based on whether it's just a user or an admin user. So the polymorphism means that the object will behave differently based on the circumstances or based on what kind of object it is. Okay, so an admin user is going to be able to have different methods or the same methods will behave differently based on the fact that it's an admin user. Okay, questions about any of those so far about the pie part. Okay, and then abstraction. This is very common that there's always like everybody refers to the four pillars. Um, I don't think that abstraction is necessarily only associated with object-oriented programming. 
abstraction is everywhere in programming. Like it's abstraction is what we do, right? When a computer, our computers are running, right? It's not running like words and code isn't running through them, right? It, a computer responds to high voltage, low voltage, right? So it's if it's high voltage, a switch opens. If it's low voltage, a switch closes. So when we write programs for computers, like we use a programming language to write programs, we're dealing with abstraction. Like we're, abstraction basically means stripping away complexity. So we don't need to worry about the voltage that's going through our motherboard, right? We write programs that ultimately will handle those abstract little details, right? So abstraction is basically um, like with Python, Python is written in the C programming language. We don't have to understand C to write Python. And with hell, I mean, you know, it's, you can write other C, you can write programs in C that'll work in Python, but that's the Python programming language is an abstraction of the C language. So we can write programs in Python without having to understand the more complex language of C. Does that make sense? Any questions about any of these? Okay. So let me go to my code. Where is it? There we go. All right. So four pillars. So the classic example is a coffee machine. I think I don't think I've ever seen a tutorial on OOP or, or the four pillars that doesn't talk about the coffee machine. So coffee machines encapsulation is basically this, right? We're packaging up the data about the coffee machine and the functionality of the coffee machine into a class. Okay, so this basically writing a class and writing its methods, adding its attributes is encapsulation, okay? So when we make a, another type of coffee machine, right? So there's all kinds of different coffee machines, right? There's a, the French press, that kind of like glass thing where you push the plunger down and it filters the coffee. There's the new, the K-cup, uh, like the Keurig machines. The, so you would say that the French press is a coffee machine, right? So when, whenever you have the is a relationship, like, the French press is a coffee machine or the K-cup is a coffee machine, you know that you're dealing with inheritance. So we have like a subclass of what we're dealing with. It's a type of something, then you're gonna be having some sort of inheritance usually, okay? Um, so like French press, I've defined my coffee machine class. Yeah, let me make sure I'm in the, open up my terminal. So I have my coffee machine class. And I can basically from here make a coffee machine, right? So if I come down further, now let me do it down here. So how would I make a coffee machine from my coffee machine class? You can give it a name. Yeah. So I'm going to say Mr. Coffee equals no, parentheses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, coffee machine. And then... I don't remember if I had any. Yeah, so I have a, oh no, wait, where is it? Yeah, I have a type of a default and I just set it to a default parameter so I can make a coffee machine without passing in attributes. And notice here, um, this is something I didn't have a chance to talk about yesterday. I have a water temperature set to a constant. This is perfectly permissible in an in init function. You, you don't have to pass in the parameters in the parameter list. You can have default methods. You can have some sort of functionality, like if I wanted to keep a product ID, right? To keep track of a product ID or a, I don't know what they call it, like a serial number on a coffee machine. I can set that up in here. The user doesn't have to worry about it. I can just basically every time I create a coffee machine, I automatically stamp a, a, a serial number on it, okay? So this is fine. I don't have to indicate what the water temperature is when I make my coffee machine. So now if I come down here, make Mr. Coffee, and if I run my file, I can look at Mr. Coffee, and I see that I have a coffee machine, okay? Now I also have a, 
a French press, right? So how would I make a French press given that it's a, it inherits from coffee machines? So all I've done is create the coffee, the, I'm sorry, the French press class, had it inherit from coffee machine and I just put pass. That's all I do. So coffee how do you dot French press? Yeah. So I could say, I don't know, what, what should I call it? I just call it F, -pre F press equals French press. And I can't remember if I passed anything yet. No, I didn't. Okay. So now I should have a French press. If I save my file, uh, to exit. Okay, run it again. I have F press is there. Now, if I look at the uh, methods and attributes on F press by using the dir method, you'll notice that all I did when I defined my French press was just say pass, right? But if I look at my French press, it has all the dunder methods that come just by virtue of being a Python class. But I also have the brew coffee method. I have the clean method. I have a type attribute and I have a water temp attribute, right? So just by doing this one line of code in my French press, it has all access to all the methods of its parent class without redefining them. Okay, so this is one of the benefits of OOP is keep, oops, keeping our code dry. What does dry mean? Forget or not don't like repeat over. Don't repeat over. yourself. Don't repeat yourself. Right. So this would be don't repeat yourself. The opposite of dry is wet, which means write everything twice. Not really. That's a joke. But yeah, so dry means we want to, if we have if we know that our subclass is going to need all of these methods, then that's that's all we need to do. We've made a French press. We're done, right? Yeah, Alex. So now, for example, it's a French press. All right, so it's a it's a sub like a, it's kind of like a subcategory of the coffee the whole coffee machine like coffee machine factory, right? You got exactly. coffee machine factory, yeah, French press, whatever models. So now, with the single example of the water temp. So my French press has adopted all the other characteristics from the coffee machine. Right. Now I want to do a different water temp from my French uh, press. Yeah. Good question. Because, you know, maybe I want all the other characteristics, but for this particular characteristic, I want to change something. It's like, you um, guys always ask the question that leads to my next topic. It's like, you guys are right there with me. I like it. So, yeah. So we, what if we don't want, it's not like the water temperature, you know, whatever. We want to change, we want to add a characteristic to our French press, right? Like for instance, I have this clean method here, just as kind of a joke, right? So if I say French press, or if I say coffee maker dot Mr. Coffee dot clean, I'm gonna get these strings printed out. Next year. Right? I'm sorry. 2023. Yeah. Where, I mean, where? I it's too far off for me to give a date. Okay. Uh, Mike, Jen. Oh, oh, I thought he was talking to me. <laughs> Let me just mute. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah. So if I say Mr. Coffee dot clean, I get this, right? I get, where is it? Why did it not print the other one? That's weird. Okay, yeah, someone left the wet filter in the machine over the weekend. This is totally gross, right? This clean method doesn't apply to the um, French press, right? Because there's no filter. It's just, you put the, beat, the, the grounds in and you push the thing down, there's no filter to throw away. So if I want to override this method, right? I would change the behavior based on the type of class it is, right? So what is that called? Which one of the four pillars does that fall under? Polymorphism. polymorphism. Oh, yeah, polymorphism. So if I want to move <laughs> my French press down here 
So it's it has the, the it's an example of inheritance, but now I'm going to add the example as an example of polymorphism. So I'm going to say the French press now has a clean method. <coughs> And it's going to print, I don't know. How do I get the grounds out? I don't know. So now when I save my file, if I rerun this, exit, rerun it. Now if I say French press or F press, not clean. Say, how do I get the grounds out? Okay, so the clean method is gonna be different for each one. So all I've done though, all the other methods are still there. If I look at dir f press, right? The only thing I've overridden is the clean method, right? Everything else, the type, the water temp, the brew coffee, all that stuff is the same, right? The only thing I've changed is the clean, the clean method, Eric. Um, just so I could visually understand this. So if you didn't add in line 30 and 31, and then you called French press clean, it would repeat what the parent said, basically, yes. is what you're saying? Okay. Yes. Okay. So just by defining its own clean method, it'll, it'll overwrite what the parent has. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So what if I want to add, so it's got a type, got a temperature. I want to add. Um, Tyler, you have a bunch of hands. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Uh, Tyre, what's up? Yeah. I, so if you say for the clean, you didn't want it to print. Uh, I forgot we changed it to the, uh, how do I get the grounds out? If you wanted it to do nothing, would you just put pass in instead? If you wanted it like to not say anything instead so, of having an alternate phrase or whatever? Yeah, so if I wanted to like just get rid of the clean method? Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, where I would I, say anything at all? Yeah, or just have it, probably pass would actually work, yeah. That's a good question. I, yeah. I. Hmm. There's probably a more Pythonic way to do that. Like if you want to like discard a method, but I don't know off the top of my head what it is. I'll look into it and I'll give you a better answer. But at this point, this would work. This would just basically, we, well, when you call the clean method, it's going to return none. So to eliminate the method, I'm not sure how to do that. I'll have to, it's a very okay. good question. I, I don't know the answer. Uh, Tim. Yeah, so once you've rewritten that method in the child, now in that child, do we still have access to the the original method that the parent had? Or is that even something that we should or shouldn't do okay. to try Good to qu access the previous? Good question. Good question. So if we want the... So if we want to access the method in the parent and then add to it, that's, um, so let me talk about adding attributes and then it'll make more sense when we talk about changing methods from the parent. So I'm going to get to that. Okay. Mario, what's up? Uh, I think you might've just answered it. I was going to ask, um, if we're inheriting from another class, do we not need the, the init function? Yes, good, good, good. Okay. Good I question. Were, uh, exactly, yeah. So let's say um, I want to add a attribute for the French press, right? So I want to I'm gonna call the init method or give it an init method. And you'll notice that when I when I use the autocomplete functionality in Visual Studio Code, it automatically fills this in for me. So it takes the it's smart enough to know what the init method is in the parent class. And it brings it down for me. So we've got def init um, self and then type coffee machine. And then we have this super, which kind of looks like a function invocation, right? And then we're calling a method on that function, right? So 
what this line does, what line 31 does is basically um, kind of creates an instance of the parent and then allows us to inherit to inherit the attributes we want. Okay, so the super, you can think of the super as basically calling an instance and then calling the init method on it. So if we want the type, um, if we wanted the um, water temperature, I think we can access it through there. Let's try it, we'll find out. So we get the type, and if I want to import the water temperature, uh, it's not letting me do it. But I any of the, the, I'm sorry, right. talking real quick, but I thought the point of like this whole parent child class is I don't have to retype all this right here in line 30, 31. Right. So the only reason you have to retype this is if you want to add attributes to the child class that the parent class doesn't have. So you saw that when I did this before, I have the clean, or I'm sorry, the type, the water temp, and I didn't do this, right? I didn't, this is the code that I was running before I added this dunder init method. So if you just want to inherit the attributes that the parent has and not change anything, then yeah, you don't have to do this. But if we want to do any sort of changing, we can call the methods that we want to inherit from the parent in here. So if we don't want all of them, we can kind of pick and choose. Like and you want to change the size or something? Yeah, yeah. And otherwise we can make new methods, right? So if it's, um, I don't know, material type. Material type, right? Because French presses are either made of Pyrex or I don't know, I'm trying to figure this out. So. If I, so now if I want to add the material type to the child that the parent doesn't have, I would just follow the same procedure as before. I would say self.material type <laughs> equals material type. There we go. Okay, so the super um, functionality basically lets us inherit from the parent the attributes we want. Um, and then to add them, we just follow this normal procedure for adding attributes to, to a class. Okay. Now, if we, any questions about this before I go on? Uh, is that super line, is that complete already? Or is that, or like, have you changed anything? I haven't changed anything, no. Can you put an example of what you would change or like? Um, so if I had another method in my parent class, like uh, filter type, I don't know. Um, and then, so this had a self dot filter type. Did I just spell filter type equals filter type. So when if in a French press, did I is that misspelled? F I L. Oh, I know yeah, why. That's right. I put it in. Okay, so this is um, a Python thing. So if I have a default argument, or I'm sorry, a default parameter in my list, it has to go at the end. So I've got to oh put this out. I was I was running into that problem this whole time. I was like, yeah, I couldn't add an extra. Yeah. So yeah. So whenever you have a default parameter, it has to go at the end of the parameter list. So I, see. I made that mistake on purpose. I was just I was just testing you guys. Not really. I I, I forgot and did that. So anyway, yeah. So <laughs> you have to put. So if I had if this had if the coffee machine parent class had a filter type, I don't need to worry about that down here, right? The French press doesn't have a filter. So I would only inherit what I want. I wouldn't inherit the filter type unless I wanted to, right? So if I wanted to inherit the filter type for some reason, I didn't know how French press worked, I would just say filter type. And why is it giving me? 
I don't know why that's throwing error or warning me. But you, you, you said that if you, I thought you automatically inherited. I thought that the super line was to, if you wanted to change, like for example, you wanted to change the filter type or something. So um, this super, this super, because I thought everything, all those attributes already come to you. I thought that this super allows you to change whatever those are. So the super, th this is just for inheriting the attributes that you want. I think if you want to override it, you would just define, redefine it down here. Like if you wanted to say self dot filter type equals filter type. that would override the parent class. Oh, and that's why I was getting an error because I wasn't passing it in. Filter type comma, yeah. So if I want to get the filter type from the parent, I would just type it in here. And then not define this line, right? I would take this out. But if I want to redefine it, then I would not pass it into the super method or the pass it into the init and then redefine it down here as this attribute that only, or that changes on the child class. Does that make sense? That makes literally no sense. <laughs> but you're, you're saying, for, so, so if you're, do, if you do want to redefine it, then you don't put it into the super. If you, if you want to get the attribute from the parent class exactly uh -huh. as it stands without any alteration, you pass it into the dunder init method, right? You, you take the, the super method creates an instance of the parent class. You call the dunder init method explicitly, and then you pass in the attributes you want from the parent class, okay? Just as they are, but if you want to um change that but i don't know why you would do that down here i don't know why you would do this right because you're passing in and that's probably why it doesn't make sense because you wouldn't do this you wouldn't take because if you're passing it in when you create the, the french press you're taking the parent method right so if you wanted to redefine something else you would do it in here like if you want like material type right so the coffee machine initial parent class of the coffee machine doesn't have a material type so you're redefining that on the child class. Sorry, I'm going the wrong place. But if you want the filter type, you would just pass it in here. Okay. Okay. So anything you, any attribute you want to inherit from the parent class, if you're creating a separate class that isn't defined on the parent, mm -hmm. you need to use this syntax. And you just type to get that. You just type started typing in it, right? And it yeah, all that popped up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So because Python, the the linter or the Python thing, right, just automatically knows that this is a child class. So when right. I say def under init, it automatically That's populates it everything. But if you wanted to add a new one, then you'd have to type it in there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. The confusion. Mario, what's up? Uh, so uh, I'm a little confused. So the line 31, so we, you're inheriting like filter type and a type, right? Mm -hmm. um, so those are the attributes in the parent class. Yes. Okay. But, okay. But on line 29, you still got to specify that you are inheriting from the coffee machine class. Right. Okay. Now, remember, I'm only doing this. The only reason I would re- and this is called overriding. The only reason I would override the dunder init method of the parent class is if I want to add attributes the parent doesn't have. Okay, because without, oh, okay. right? If I can take this out and all I want is the attributes and methods from the parent class, all I have to do is say French press pass and I got them all, right? The only reason I want to put anything in this method is if I want to override. So anything okay. you want to override, you have to redefine. Otherwise, you're keeping your code dry by just taking all of these methods that are auto automatically, or I'm sorry, already exist. Um, Tim. 
Okay, wait. So you hit you hit pass for that class mm -hmm. in order to just grab the parent attributes? Yeah. Now you would never do this, right? You wouldn't make in real code, you wouldn't define a child class just for the hell of it, right? You're not just gonna make it right because you would just use the same class. All I'm trying, I'm doing this for to for illustrative purposes that you get everything for free from the parent class. But to redefine and add methods, add attributes, you start defining them down here in the child class. So if you have, if you want to override the clean method, right? You don't, you're never, like I said, you're never going to do this. You're going to put, a, you're going to override the clean method. You're going to say def clean and then change it, right? Give it whatever you want the clean method to do in the child class. Okay. So, yeah. That makes sense. Otherwise you just use yeah, the yeah, that makes sense. class anyway. Right. I, I get that, but I swear, like you just said, if I wanted characteristics from the parent class, I would have to use that dunder in it to get those like you want i wanted a filter type i had to use a dunder init to get the filter type right only what if that? yeah so you would only do this right so if i say def dunder mm -hmm. init right right i only do this if i want to add attributes to my child class that don't exist on my parent class okay i i think i heard something different because i thought you said if I wanted something from my parent class, I would have to do that line right there, 32 yeah. to 33 to get it. Right. Yeah. So I but isn't the super, but isn't the super now grabbing from the parent? Yeah. So this is, I mean, this is just the short syntax. Instead of having to say self dot filter type equals filter type, this is doing that. Oh. Basically take this line is taking these, right? So you don't have to retype them. Got you. Okay. And this, and it's, you have to imagine that, imagine like the cop, this isn't like a stupid example of a coffee machine and it's a user and the user has a first name, a last name, an email, a social security number, a phone number, right? You, you wouldn't want to have to retype 10 different attributes when all you have to do is say super and pass them into an argument list. Got you. Okay. Thanks. Eric, what's up? So just so I just want to make sure I understand this. So line 32 is where you're getting all of the attributes from the parent. And line 33 is where you would type in the stuff that you want to add to the child that the parent doesn't have. Below line 33, right. So if I wanted to um, add, it's so hard to think of examples with coffee machines. It's like- um, But you would just write it in 32 and then put it below 33? Exactly. exactly. Okay, okay. New attribute. Right, whatever it is. Yeah. Because I'm running out of ideas for coffee machine. So then down here, I would say self dot new attribute. Oops. Equals new attribute. Right. Or so put it in the super, right? No, because the, the new attribute that I'm adding doesn't exist on the parent. So, the, so what the, would you write in the super then? What did you say you would write in the super? In Not the su in the super, but in the app. Yeah, that. Right here? String. Yeah, so yeah. in here, I, so if I'm adding an attribute to the child class, I don't need to add anything in here. This is only the stuff I'm getting from the parent class. But I thought It's just a line of like showing French. you. It's just a line like showing you the parents' classes yeah. or attributes that are being brought down. Right, much. right. Okay. Yeah. But I thought that's being done with the French press and putting in the coffee machine object. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm probably eh, probably should have lied to you a little bit. So this um, we only need to do this if we're adding attributes. Okay. So if I again, if I take this out, right, and just say pass. I get everything from the parent, right? Okay. But in reality, in actual practice, you would never do this. You only make a child class if you want to override methods or add attributes. So this, I'm just, I was, and this probably, 
it's a mental note, this is probably more confusing than helpful. But this is, I just was trying to show that this is what's possible, right? You would never do this though. You would definitely add attributes to your subclass or you would add methods to your subclass. Okay. Got it. Okay. I'm still confused on what you would put in the super, like what goes in there. In here? So yeah. The su so this super takes, let me write this down. I know you said the super is basically all the stuff underneath the parents' attributes. So this brings the attributes from the parent class that we want our child class to inherit. This one, yeah. So we put anything, anything in here, anything and everything that we want to inherit from the parent class. We list it in here. We pa first pass it as an, as a, um, oh my gosh, parameter. <laughs> we first pass it as a parameter in here. Then we pass it to the super class. That allows the inheritance from the parent class. Okay, so um, that's how we get whatever we want. If we want it all, we just have to list it all. We only want one attribute from the parent class. We just put the attribute we want. Tim. So you're saying if we initialize the init function right there, we're going to have to call back all of the attributes using the super from the copy machine because the function knows, the class knows that we're redefining stuff. So we have to pull what we need at that point yes. versus just leaving the copy machine and say, okay, here's everything you got in the yes. copy machine. Yeah. Uh, we have to explicitly, so, yeah, we have to explicitly tell the subclass what we want it to inherit. Okay. Because again, right when you define your init or your first function, um, the init, you're automatically stating all right, erase all the copy machine attributes and methods and uh, pull what you need using the super and then add what you need later. Yes. For, or, yes. Yeah. yeah, because we're basically there's an init method, even though it's a built in or magic method or whatever you want to call it, it's still here, right? So when we, when we write the init method in our child class, we're basically, we're overwriting it. We're overwriting in the child class what the parent class has. Got you. Cool. Cool, cool. And okay. then again, the super is just to be like cherry picking. Yes. Yes, exactly. Of what the coffee machine has. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Any other questions? Because I know this is kind of weird. Kind of, I mean, it's hard to understand. So. All right. So. What I want to, I want to move on to um, the module stuff. So let me just show you one more thing about inheritance. Um, I'm going to comment all this out. So let's say I have a class of user and I'm going to say def thunder init. And let's say the user has a name and an email. So I say self.name equals name, self.email equals email. Okay. So now if I make, oh, email, there we go. So if I make a user, and I print my user. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to enter no interactive. Oops, what did I do? 
Oh, because I didn't pass the name and email. All right, Jane and Janie at email.com. Put it in quotes. There we go. Let's try it again. So I get this kind of ugly looking, uninformative string, right? That indicates, all this indicates is that the Dunder main just means that the file that's running, there's a user class, and this is an object of that class, right? Totally unhelpful, right? So we can, these methods are called Dunder methods, and they're also called magic methods, because they're sort of, for lack of a better term, magic, right? So we can override, just like we override methods in classes we write, we can override the methods that lead to some of the things that Python has built in, right? So basically what I'm doing when I say print Jane, I'm saying Jane dot dunder str dunder, and I'm invoking that method, okay? So when I run this again, I get the same, Oh, I got to print it. Yeah, I get the same thing, right? So we can override the dunder stir method to give us useful information when we print out our objects. So I can say def dunder stir take self. And instead of printing out this completely unhelpful string that tells me the esoteric memory location where my data is stored, I can say return. I think it's, I can't remember if it's return or print. I think it's return. F um, user name is self dot name and user email is self.email. And I can't remember if it's a return or print, but let me see, see if, it, if it works. Yeah, so if I return this string with this more helpful information, when Python automatically renders to the screen what my object is, Instead of getting this, which is not helpful at all, I get I can print out the string and customize what gets returned when I print an object. So this will come in handy when we get to, um, to Flask and we're trying to figure out what objects are going where. Um, if you just add in this dunder stir, override what gets output, it'll be easier to see what's being printed and what goes where as a method in our class. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this, and, and, and the reason I introduced this here is because in essence, that's what we're doing. We're overriding this method that comes with Python, right? Python has this dunder stir and without overriding it, it just does like what we saw before, right? It just prints this out, but we can customize what gets returned and this will be more helpful when we try to see like what a user is in our terminals. Um, can you just go through the process again one more time about how it's returning immediately Jane's stuff? Because we made Jane a user. Oh, the print. Yeah, gotcha. the print. And actually, the, the, what we would actually do is just print Jane, and it'll do. It should do the same thing. If I'm not, let me just make sure I'm not lying to you. Yeah. So. What we're doing when we call the print method with just the name Jane, it's syntactic sugar for what I had before. So if I put this back and if I print Jane, right? Line 70, sorry, line 72 is syntactic sugar for line 71. So instead of writing this kind of hard to write using a lot of shift keys, Dunder Stir method. What Python is doing is behind the scenes, it just saying, okay, you have this class, we have this stir method. Whenever we print it, print this, right? And by default, it prints this, but we can override the stir method and have it print something that's more informative. 
and that this is more useful for debugging and trying to figure out what's going on with our with our applications or ninja challenge or yeah yeah maybe 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 all right so that went way longer than i had hoped so um let me see what else so I'm going to have a brief afternoon session to talk about modules because I don't want to, I don't want to introduce it now when you guys are probably um, I probably overworked your brain. So let's stop the morning session here. Let me stop sharing.